Hi, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and I wanted to show you what you can do with the hand controller after you've got it aligned and you're finding objects in the night sky, um, just to kind of give you an overview of what the hand controller can do, because there's more, more to it than just hitting uh, Jupiter, go to, and then, you know, finding Jupiter. There, there's, there's more buttons on here. What do they do? What are the features of the hand controller? So first off, on the, on the top row, you've got your menu and the enter and the escape button. That's just to kind of navigate. And then below that, the arrow buttons. These are the arrow buttons to slew around the night sky. They're not to navigate through the menus. For those, it's the buttons on the bottom, the down and the up button here. Uh, the buttons here navigate around the night sky. The, probably the easiest thing to do if you're just getting started is do the tour function. So again, this is once the telescope has been aligned with two stars, it knows where everything is in the sky and you're wondering what's the next thing to look at, well, have the, have the hand controller suggest something. So hit the tour button, and it'll search its database for objects that are interesting that are up at that time of night. It won't suggest something that's uh, up during the day and down at night for your location. So it's just going to show you the things that you can see uh, when you're out there at night. So for instance, I did a fake two-star alignment just to get this thing working here. The, uh, it's uh, telling me that the Hades star cluster, the flaming star nebula, that sounds interesting, uh, the flame nebula, there's all sorts of different things. So I'm going to pick, um, uh, how about the flame nebula? And I hit enter. It'll tell you where it is, and then it'll ask you, do you wish to view this object? I'm going to say yes. Yeah. So, it goes to the Flame Nebula to, to view. With a 5-inch telescope, the Flame Nebula is, is actually fairly bright. So if you're away from the city lights, you would be able to see that with a uh, low-power eyepiece. So definitely for that object, use the 25-millimeter, that, that, or the 23-millimeter, excuse me, that comes with the telescope. Uh, and then you can scroll through the, the list of other objects that are there um, uh, because there's always going to be something interesting for your time of night. Escape back out of that. The next button is the Rate. So if you're slewing around manually, you can use the arrow buttons to zoom around. And the rate button gives you nine different choices from one to nine. So right now this is nine. This is the fastest speed. But let's say I get somewhat close to the object and I don't want to use the go-to system. Or maybe let's say I'm looking at the moon and I just want to scan around the moon at high power and look at different features. Well, nine might be too fast. So hit the rate button and go to, say, seven. Now. It's probably kind of hard to see the motion, but I'm moving upwards right now. And it's moving much slower, probably half as fast as it was going before, left and right. Um, if you center on a specific object on the moon and you really pump up the power, even that's probably too much power. So you can go down to rate three, say. And here I know for a fact you're not going to be able to see any motion. But if I was looking through the eyepiece at a star, I'd see them slowly drifting by as I press the arrow buttons. So a good way to uh, control the speed of the mount to fine-tune the positioning. Utility functions. I'm not really going to go through all the utilities. There's a whole bunch of uh, utilities, in including show your current position. Um, there's a uh, mode for uh, refining the positioning of the telescope, parking it in a certain location. There's all sorts of utility functions. Next are the object databases. So four, five, and six are the deep sky objects. The Messier objects, that's number four. NGCs are number five, and the ICs are number six. Those are all different databases of objects. The Messier is probably being the most popular. That is a collection of 109, 110 of the best and brightest of the deep sky objects. So let's say you wanted to see the Orion Nebula and just happen to know that it's M42. That's the Messier designation for Orion. The easiest and quickest way to go to Orion is just punch in the numbers. So it's M42. Well, M is four, so I'm going to go backwards. So it's Messier and then 42. So Messier 42, hit enter. It will ask you if you'd like to see that object after telling you where it is. Say yes. And it will default back to the fast slew speed in order to get you there really quick. The NGCs, uh, all the Messiers are included in the NGCs. The NGCs are about 7,000 plus objects of varying brightness, including a lot that are very, very faint. So I would suggest if you're if you're just starting out, stick with the Messier objects. IC is another database, so you can go through a catalog, a book, and uh, uh, it will list out the object names and their locations. And you can just punch in those names that you see in the book directly in here. It's going to have it in there because there's, there's 42,900 objects in this database. So it pretty much has everything that you'll find in most standard star charts. Uh, the next row, see the, uh, the first one was the planets. So that's probably the first thing you're, you're going to look at. Everybody wants to see the rings of Saturn first, right, through their, 
through the telescope. So we go back out of there to the main menu, hit planet. It will list all of the planets that are out for your time of night again. It's not going to tell you to go to Jupiter if Jupiter's down here and hasn't risen yet. So I will go to, say, Jupiter there. I'll hit enter. Again, it'll say, do you wish to view this object? And away it goes. So I'm going to also hit escape right now just so it doesn't slew off somewhere. Uh, the escape button is good for stopping the slew uh, in case you want to stop for some reason. Next, the objects. Go back out to the main menu. Objects. Now that's a whole different catalog of things. There's name stars, user objects, deep sky tour again, uh, variable stars. So there's a bunch of different objects depending on what you want to look at. Double stars. So pick what you want to see and go for it. And then user objects. You can designate favorite items under your user list. So let's say you can never remember the name of that NGC object that you like to go for. So you're just going to call it user object one. Right? So just save it under user object one, and it will save it so when you power on the next time, it still knows that user object one is that NGC object that you can't remember the name of. So a pretty handy, uh, handy uh, thing to have. The arrow buttons, like I said, for scrolling through the list, and the info button in the middle uh, gives you info about the object that you're looking at. Or if you're just panning around and you come across something without using the hand controller, and you don't know what it is, but it's, there's obviously some little fuzzy spot there, if you hit uh, info, it will actually search the database for whatever object is closest to the field of view of the position of the sky that you're pointing at. So a pretty powerful uh, search feature to identify unknown objects. All right, well, there you have it, the, uh, the sort of ins and outs of the hand controller for your Star Seeker 4 telescope. Thank you very much. Clear skies.